Welcome to Reddit Talk. This is now my 10th episode. Let's get right into this. I'm going to have one link down below to the subreddit of Reddit, which is the WWE one. Okay. So here we have, I didn't like Dirty Dom losing his chance to become World Heavyweight Champion. I have to admit, at some point, I want to see him as champion because it would draw so much heat. It really, really would. And it doesn't have to be for a long time. It could be a temporary thing. But it would put him over even more as a heel because I think he's a fantastic workhorse. A lot of people will give him slack for not really being built, uh, you know, even like a Chad Gable who's a small dude, but he's stacked, he's built. You could tell the guy works out. If you compare him to typical Eddie Guerrero, not everybody's going to have arms like that, but of course this makes you look imposing and big and like a brute. When you look at... Dom, I mean, he almost looks like he's a bit smaller than CM Punk, who I think CM Punk is great. Um, you know, wrestling's about storytelling. And sometimes the story doesn't always have to necessarily be, I mean, even his arms. But again, that's just nitpicking. Uh, I think I think he's fine. But at the same time, I have to admit there is a part of me, which is um, a bit of a... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? I can't I can't think off the top of my head. I do think at the same time, when you're a professional athlete, you should kind of get into the gym. And I'm not saying he's not in the gym. And I'm not saying you need to get all bulked up and all that. Contradicting. I was going to say, I sound like I'm contradicting myself, but the ref looks more built than Dom does. But again, I'm not saying I have a problem with that. Yes, it is an observation. Yes. And when you look at his arm and you're like, oh, how can a guy like this stand a chance with that against a guy like that but you can because first of all it's not always about size right size helps if both people are of equal skill fighting that's why boxing ufc and all that they segregate the classes by weight there's a reason for that you're not going to really see george st pierre in his prime or conor mcgregor facing off against brock lesnar anderson da silva you're just you're not going to see that because it would be a mismatch regardless but you could still potentially have somebody small like a conor mcgregor who's like 150 155 pounds clock the shit out of somebody who's much larger because its size isn't everything right so i don't have an issue with how he looks if he had an issue with how he looks he would do something about it and yes i'm admitting again a small part of me says you should maybe kind of look like somebody who exercises in some capacity but at the same time i i don't i don't want to use that as an influence as to whether or not i think he should ever be champion i don't think unfortunately as a result though that he would make a long-term believable champion but to draw heat again some real heel heat yes I do want Dom to actually be champion before El Campeon becomes champion again. I think it would be great storytelling. Because again, with the help of the Judgment Day, JD, Finn Balor, and all that kind of stuff, right? You can make things that normally wouldn't happen, happen. Part of the storytelling. But yes, there is a small part of me that agrees with some people, you know, kind of do it up a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, I would never, if, if I was Triple H, I would never be like, yeah, we just, we just can't have you hold this. You're kind of coming up short in the physique department by a couple of inches. I don't think I would go that far. But yeah, long term, like, I mean, sorry, as a long reigning champion, no, I don't. You could still actually make that happen with the whole faction thing, right? Look at Seth Rollins again with the J&J &J security and all that. Seth Rollins is built. He's quite capable on his own. But he had the J&J &J security, Kane and all that stuff, the authority, Stephanie McMahon, Triple H and all that, right? So, yes, in closing, absolute future champion or should be in some kind of capacity. Moving on, because I feel like I'm spending... But I'll look like that one day. Mark my words. 
damn punk. Okay, who is actually a little bit beefier? Beefy punk. We're both named Phil. We're both born in 78. We're both Scorpios. But unfortunately for me, that's where the similarities end. People are saying, do you want to see CM Punk main event one night of WrestleMania 41? And I say, absolutely. And the first person that comes to my mind, not because of what the people are discussing. Yeah, like a match with John Cena, I think would be very fitting. Or as this person stated, some kind of fatal four-way, fatal five-way, maybe for the championship somewhere in there. Do we want to see Cena break Ric Flair's record? And I think that I would, even though the number of times you're champion doesn't necessarily mean anything. Because the more you win it, the more times you lost it. The Ric Flair, the 16 dime, that means he lost it almost equally as many times. It means he's a 15 time loser. You see what I'm saying? Whereas a guy like Roman Reigns, who's only been champ, how many times? I don't know, a couple. But goddamn, he held on to that thing forever, right? The storytelling again with that. Speaking of storytelling with Dominic Mysterio, Roman Reigns and the bloodline. Roman Reigns is quite capable. Looks like freaking Aquaman, Jason Momoa. Looks like a Greek god. But he had people do his dirty work and make it so that he could hold on to the title longer. Would only show up on occasions. So yeah, going back to that Dom thing, you could make that work having having him as a champion. Uh, Yeah, I want to see CM Punk in the main event picture. Doesn't always have to be for the title. Doesn't always have to be for the title. But I absolutely think he's enough of a draw that we can totally have that. I would like to see that, at least even if it's night one. doesn't have to be night two. Maybe night two. Again, with John Cena, people are throwing in, what if there's Gunther in there and you throw in a title? I still don't know. I haven't given that enough thought to think about where I want the future to go. But Seth Rollins with, with CM Punk would be absolute money as well, right? Because there's a story right there. There's a story with him and Drew that's pretty much like done now. And it's going to leave a legacy behind of them having like a pretty amazing feud. Well, Seth Rollins has a, an amazing story here with CM Punk. So imagine like what they were saying. Fatal 4-Way, what if you have, like, John Cena, Seth Rollins, CM Punk, Gunther, or something like that? I think that could be pretty incredible. But again, who would you have win that? Oh, that's another story for another day. I'm not saying I know what outcome would be the best or even which one I would want. But yeah. Um, I would probably have, if I had to, off the top of my head, and this is probably bad for business, which is why I would never work for WWE. They'd be like, forget this guy. He's got the wackiest ideas. Is you would have John Cena win on the grandest stage of them all because he really does deserve it. He's been treated like a jobber the last few years. Uh, he really is, like, special beyond what words in a dictionary can properly describe. John Cena, that is. I wouldn't mind seeing him winning at Mania, right? And then not dropping it right away, but I know that shortly after Mania, I think it's going to be his last match. It's going to be his last Mania, but I think he is scheduled to wrestle all the way up until, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on this, I think Survivor Series would be potentially like his last of 2025, like his last PLE, right? Even if you had John Cena hold on to it for an entire couple of months and he quote-unquote drops it to Rollins and a triple threat or just whatever to CM Punk at SummerSlam, I think that would be cool. There's just so many, op so many possibilities that either make sense or don't make sense. Just things I wish would happen, right? But yes, I want to see him 
main event one of those nights, absolutely, with other people, of course, to share that spotlight with him. Really liking Dragon Lee so far. Yeah, I'm absolutely just right from the hop. Loving Dragon Lee. I remember when I saw Rey Mysterio the first time, long time ago, loved Rey Mysterio, the whole luchador thing. And, you know, the smaller guys moving around really fast and all that. Just really great. Dragon Lee brings in a little bit more power moves sometimes. He's just really like something else. Like he can keep up with Ray, and Ray's really impressive for his age. I think he's like 51, 52. Great shape, still has it. Doesn't look rusty or like he's falling apart. There's no awkwardness with Ray Mysterio. Um, had that great match, like this person said here with Chad Gable, Dragon Lee, that is. And yeah, I. I remember Sin Cara. Sorry, there was two Sin Caras, but I remember the original Sin Cara, and he was really impressive. He would, like, run, and then just, like, from the ground, just jump over the flipping top rope, and I was like, holy shit balls! That was, like, just not normal. Uh, and I don't really know what happened to him. I know he got replaced, and then he kind of just, like, dwindled, and then there was that wrestler, Neville, who became... X-Pac, Tupac, haha, -ha. uh, and he's really good. He's not a luchador, but I just mean like, you know, for a high flyer kind of guy. And yeah, this guy, again, brings a little bit more to his uh, move repertoire, which I agree with. And I think he is just an absolute spectacle uh, in the ring. And I could see this guy going really, really far. And uh Yeah. Simple as that. Like, I'm just glad he's around. I, I'm really, really happy. And I hope they keep him around for a long time and don't give him the Sin Cara treatment where he just kind of fizzles out into nowhere. Jey Uso on the number one merch seller for the month of October. Beating out Roman Reigns and CM Punk combined. All I got to say to that is, hey, good for him, man. That's awesome. Very, very proud of him. I mean, he is over. You could say what you want. And, oh, I'm bored of the yeet yeet. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. The whole yeet thing, I don't really get it. I'm just being perfectly honest. I'm just sort of like, man, that word gets said a lot. I think it's just to play on yip. You know, like I, I don't, I tried looking it up actually, and I couldn't really understand it. But yes, I do find it slightly like, uh, but I am totally not annoyed with it though. I am still a big part of the Yeet movement. I'm very, very happy for him and his brother now back in the spotlight. Uh, he's just been doing so well for himself. And again, this wasn't pushed, right? Like the original Roman Reigns run. It just organically, dynamically happened. And the fans are on board. Like, he is so over. And I'm just really proud of him. He totally, 100,000% deserves it. Really, really does. Cody Rhodes, new finisher. So this one, I'm going to read out the whole thing here really quick. I reckon the Crossroads finisher for Cody is being treated more like a signature and used for kickout pops, which is good. But I reckon Cody needs a finisher that means this match is done. Sort of like how I feel about the splash plus the power bomb from Gunther. I reckon a flying elbow could be the way to go for this as it's pretty devastating and most people can move out of the way in order to protect the move, right? Rather than kicking out of it. So the Macho Man Randy Savage elbow or the Bailey elbow. I'd rather the Macho Man elbow, uh, even though it's similar. Cody could definitely build a lot of anticipation going up for the elbow, making any time Cody goes up to the ropes a moment of anticipation for the fans. Wondering if anyone agrees that Cody should change his finisher. Just think the crossroad is too weak. He needs to hit like seven of them in the course of a match to win. And God forbid he doesn't hit three because we know they kick it out. I get what what this person is saying, but when you're in a high caliber match and you're with a T-Rex like Gunther, 
and that adrenaline's going, you're the champion, right? That's always the story, the, uh-huh, it was the adrenaline. How did he kick out of that? Oh, my God, right? Um, didn't kick out. Uh, Roman didn't kick out of it when he ate it, right? So, no, I think, I think, uh, crossroads is is phenomenal it's a great move maybe add you know the elbow on top of that to the repertoire i don't know to the move set i think it's fine on its own you just don't have people constantly kicking out but yeah in a high caliber match for the title or you're a crown jewel champion versus champion for the first ever crown jewel champion that rush again that's going on you know that hole where you don't feel pain and and stuff like that like not to be overly dramatic, but I remember getting into a very nasty car accident that nearly killed me some uh, almost 25 years ago. And I like walked away from that. But then after I was in a wheelchair for a while, but in that moment, the, the adrenaline, the, the shock, right? You have to understand that your body naturally produces painkiller. For real, like your endorphins, epinephrine, norepinephrine, all that funky stuff. Uh, and those chemicals are like literally, without exaggeration, can be up to like 100 times stronger than any chemical on earth that you would take in, whether it's morphine, heroin, any of those things, super powerful stuff. Uh, and I'm kind of going all over the place, but in that same light, when you're in that crazy fight or flight mode uh it's not too weird to have somebody kick out of a finisher look at wrestlemania 7. macho man that was terrible speaking of macho man him and i have the same birthday november 15th which is coming up soon uh he kicked out no sorry he kicked out he gave the ultimate warrior in that retirement match like seven or eight finishing elbow drops. And what did the warrior do? He kicked out. Right? So, I get where they're coming from. But I'm fine with, with the crossroads being his finisher. But I'm okay with you thinking it should just be used as a signature rather than a finisher. Anyhow. Speaking of, how long until we get, let's go, Cody. Cody sucks. I don't know. I think he's so well-respected. Well, I mean, so is John Cena, and then he, he got those. And You know, sometimes it's weird how the wrestling universe in general will feel about somebody. That person can, can do no wrong outside of the ring could be a very good human being look at roman reigns but if he's pushed down your throat he's gonna be one of the most hated people in the world now he's so over again because it wasn't shoved down people's throat it, it just again was organic uh cody wasn't shoved forced he was shoved he wasn't forced there's a difference I don't necessarily think we're gonna we're gonna get that. Even if he went heel, I have a feeling that people would just really respect him. Look at Gunther. Sure, people are just going, oh boo. But people really like Gunther. At least I think they do. I don't think most people actually truly hate somebody. Again, it's just from a story perspective, the good guys versus the bad guys. I don't know. I mean it happened with John Cena. Happened with a lot of other people. I don't, I mean, I, I just don't think we're going to really get that with, with Cody Rhodes. I could be wrong. I can't foretell the future. Oh, yeah, I'm not even going to, because I've already talked about it. Would it kill Dom to bulk up a bit? Um, And then some people saying it looks, it's weird looking at such a normal looking arm in WWE. He's just a guy. That's the problem. WWE is home of the spectacle in wrestling, and he just looks like a dude who doesn't exercise. Yeah, again, I get I get what people are saying. Anyways, I don't want to make this, uh, I don't even want to know. Oh, 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. That's definitely the cutoff. 
Thumbs up as always if you like the video. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm in trying to make me more relevant in the search results when people are looking shit up online. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. I'll bend it in half, twist it. You'll get the solo Sakoan spike back end. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, I mean, naturally... Oh, it is called the sub... Okay, like the sub... Anyways. Not too good with the lingo. Yeah, if you want to subscribe, great. If not, whatever. Thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care. Let me know down below some of my talking points. Say no. It's ridiculous if he's champion. He shouldn't be near any anywhere near any kind of gold. Share with me what you think on, on anything that's been discussed here. And, uh... Yeah, and that's it. So take care, and if I'm lucky, maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.